Good to go first since they're not in the assignment list and they had to email their thing. Well, has volunteered. I volunteered group 13 to go first. And you didn't fight back too hard, I think. All right, so microphone. Speak to the microphone when you're speaking. All right. I have my microphone. We're live. We're recording. Give me one minute to sit down and get my notepad open. I was just going to make a screen. You could do that. And, uh, and so everybody's got two minutes to do their elevator pitch uh, for their proposal. This is a full screen as we're going to go. So. Everyone enjoying the snow so far? A so pitifully little bit of snow, and the plows have been going nonstop all night long for such a little bit of snow. It's really sad. It's when I came in this morning, it was more like three inches. Okay. It was uh, was not too many years ago that Worcester had more snow than any city in the nation, including Anchorage, Alaska. We had 10 feet that year, and it all came in February and March. So just because you think it didn't snow much this year doesn't mean it won't still snow. Um, all right. Are we ready to go? Uh, yeah. yeah, we're good. All right. Um, let me start a two-minute timer. Two-minute timer. Are we going? Go. Okay, cool. Two Hi, everybody. Minutes. I'm Ben. Now. I'm Ben. I'm Amanda. I'm Jenny. Just kidding. I'm Jenny. <laughs> and we are Goat Fast Automotive. And we're making windshield wipers and manufacturing them. So we're going to go over the assembly steps a little bit. So the first step, oops. the first step is we're going to take natural rubber and we are going to mix the rubber so that it becomes pliable and then run it through heat treatments, uh, vulcanization in order to uh, make it more sturdy uh, of a rubber. And then we are going to run that rubber through um, extrusion dies, and then we're going to cut those blades into their uh, windshield wiper blades that you know. So while that process is going on, there's a separate process to uh, to manufacture the actual uh, structure for the windshield uh, wipers themselves. And this is done by taking sheet metal and stamping out uh, the aluminum parts that hold the blade as well as, as I said, make up the structure of the entire uh, part. And then th all of these um, stamped parts are assembled into the final product and they are tested by using a spinning glass, like a turntable with water on it. And then they put the blade on top just to make sure that they're actually removing all the water or we are. So pretty much what we're asking for is $1.5 million to start our company. This includes all of the software, all of the machines, the rigging costs, installation costs, shipping costs, all the office supplies, the entire space, all the licensing, all the software that we need to like design this and make it happen. And it's in a really good location in Michigan where most of the automotive industry is. We also have really great workers who specialize in um, automotive engineering around. That's two minutes. Thank you. We got uh, time for just one or two questions. Anybody have questions about windshield wipers? <laughs> so we have engineers. He's an aerospace engineer. So he's really good at aerodynamics. So we're just going to be way better. And then I have friends in all of the other people in Michigan, so we're just going to squeeze in through connections like good old business. Squeeze. <laughs> okay, group one. Oh, 
one side. All right. You're good to go. Oh, we're introducing ourselves. Is this the mic? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll go for Just talking to you, Red. It should work. The first three slides. Yeah. You go for the for one of the calls, and then. Braden. Oh, I'll go. Okay. And then Braden go for. Uh, no, same as. Go first too. Yeah. I do, I do yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you're calls, and then you're doing lights. Oh, okay. Two minute timer. Yep. Two minutes. Counting down. Okay, so uh, we are every um, everything but the door. I'm I'm Nicholas. I'm Sam. I'm Andrew. I'm Braden. And yeah, um, this is our presentation. Um, so in so in terms of the uh, in terms of the roles in our company, um, I'm going to be handling logistics. Sam is going to be handling uh, marketing and sales. Braden's going to be ha um, financing and accounting, and then Andrew is going to be um, handling programming and, and engineering. So uh, what are we doing and how are we doing it? So we're planning on um, manufacturing uh, parts utilized in door closers and building brackets slash fixtures. Um, we're planning on selling business to business. So we're going to make our parts and then sell it to a different business who will use it in construction. We plan on utilizing CNC machinery, milling and lathes, and we are planning on ordering parts as orders come in. All right, so for the location of our business, we plan to be in Houston, Texas, as it's right next to the city. It's a good spot to start. And we found a warehouse for... Uh, 40, $695,000. So we thought that was a pretty good price to start at. It's exactly what we're looking for, as in square feet wise and location. So our cost, uh, we've already established that our workplace will be $695,000. Um, we're looking for three mills and one lathe as um, we're planning on more custom uh, unique parts. So milling would be more important than lathes, but we still have a lathe just in case. And tooling would be 20,000. So in total, our machine cost will cost 130,000. Um, we have some initial office materials as well that um, will also cost a total of $2,800. $2, so um, we're looking for around 200,000 to, um, to cover the machine. And, um, oh wait, I just messed that up, but it's fine. So we're looking for that much for all of our stuff. Who's doing this? Okay. Sure. So, um, in terms of um, in terms of a um, so that's two minutes. minutes. Okay. The, Those are our licenses. Yep. <laughs> yep. In terms of our licenses. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. In terms of our licensing, um, we would we would need uh, we would like to register as an LLC. Um, we'd need to get um, an employer identification number and tax ID for um, for both uh, state and, and federal taxes. Um, as well as a sales permit, and then we'd also like to be um, ISO 901 certified, so that that way we can um, tell our uh, cl um, clients uh, that we are um, certified to manufacture things consistently. Okay. No time for questions. Group, group two. And Sue, so when you come down for your group. Find yourself in the list here. And if you don't find yourself in the list there, hit refresh. And then look at the list. That's probably not the document you wanted to show. Perfect. And talk somewhere near the microphone. I'll do it. All right, so we are team two. We are the Automotive Sanctuary. I'm Morgan. I'm James. Christian. Simon. Dante. So I'm going to be financing and accounting. James is going to be maintenance. Uh, Dante is going to be quality assurance and operations. Simon's going to be sales and marketing and shipping and receiving. And Christian is going to be engineering. So the location we chose was 1025 Findlay Road, Lima, Ohio, 35,000 square foot building, around $775,000 uh, on, on the site. Uh, why we chose that, it's nearby other automotive parts manufacturers, so we're hoping to see some cooperation in there. 
uh, and the product that we're going to be making would be car engine parts like camshafts, valves, pistons, and push rods. So these are some of these steps we identified for making camshafts. So you have to uh, groove the shaft and face it on the lathe. You have to uh, gun drill the camshaft core. You have to rough the cam again, and then you have to heat treat the cores, grind the camshaft journals, finish the surface, and then quality test. So these are kind of the supplies and costs that we identified. So we identified all the machines that we would need and all the initial tooling and other uh, recurring cost setups, as well as things like fusion licenses or ISO training and certification, which would be about $40 an hour we could find, 40 to 80 per hour of training. Uh, these are some of the uh, licenses and certifications that we could find that we might need for this type of operation. Um, and in terms of material costs, uh, these are what we could find as far as bulk prices for materials uh, that we might need during operations. And these are our sources. Outstanding. Um, time for one question. All right, then group three. I'm Cece. I'm Lily. And I'm Brady. Um, our two other members are um, snowed in. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we are uh, Modomatic. And. Right. Uh, our general goal and our mission is to provide an efficient and reliable manufacturing services to local uh, industries who are looking to produce parts, uh, <laughs> mostly in consumer uh, areas. So people could outsource their manufacturing to us rather than spending the costs themselves. Uh, we will be located in North Carolina. Um, it's centralized to the East Coast. It's very close uh, to railroads, freight ports, airports, and it's very big. It's 5,000 square feet, two drive-in bays, and it was recently built. This is a makeup model of it. Um, so we have split up our roles as the ones you can see here. I won't get too much into that because um, we kind of already talked about that. Um, but for initial costs, we are seeking around $125,000. Um, this will help cover the equipment costs as well as the beginning costs for our lease of our building. Um, we will be using Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist mostly to get started so we can earn that profit. And then hopefully we can buy our own new lathes, mills, et cetera. Um, why would you choose Monomatic? Um, because we are a group of students who are passionate um, and well-driven, and we will take on any project, big or small, like Brady discussed. Um, and um, we have a great location, as CC discussed. We are near an airport, um, a railroad station, and a seaport, and that allows us to get products out to really anywhere in the world. We want to be your go-to place for all your prototyping needs and all your small batch manufacturing outstanding any questions all right group whatever's next four This is, this is a big group. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jack. This is Cullen. This is Aiden. This is Ben. This is Sean. And this is why, Chris. Why can't I not remember that? Uh, we are Wingtastic Firearms. Uh, we have been internship. We have been interning for a couple of years for a few other um, firearms manufacturing companies, such as Savage Arms and Springfield Armory Incorporated. And now we're willing to start our own business. 
Uh, we're going to be located in Poti- Poti- well, I kind of remember that either. Pocatello, Idaho. Uh, we're mainly going to be doing business in Chubbuck, mostly because there's like three major highways and um, the airports support cargo shipping. So we're going to be able to do a lot of business mainly in Chubbuck, but we found a very nice place that we're going to pay for 30% of in advance uh, in Pocatello. That's totally not the right button. Boop. All right, so our goal. So in the short term, we are going to begin our manufacturing process as well as acquiring a third-party license to use a third-party uh, firearm platform. We'll uh, also be intending to get investment uh, capital so we can invest in our long-term goals. And our long-term goals are to develop our own unique platform through R&D as well as expand, expand on our manufacturing process and compete for defense contracts, which perfectly line up in our long term as they end in 10 years currently. Okay, so for our cost breakdown, you can pretty much just read the numbers. We're asking for $305,000. Um, so we're going to have uh, tools. We're going to be machining, or we're going to be using a CNC mill to do most of the work on the uh, like receiver part of the firearm, and then also um, some lathe work for the, uh, the barrel. Um, so we're going to have some some monthly costs too, but we're still going to estimate around sixty to seventy thousand dollars of profit per month. And for the licensing, um, we need a man. That's we need a manufacturer uh, um, a barrel firearm license or FFL, specifically Type Seven manufacturing firearm, and that li- and our license is have to be approved by the by the Alcohol talk, uh, Tobacco and Firearm. Yeah, ATF agency allows us to manufacturing and sell firearms to output to our customer. All right, two minutes. <laughs> One question. Next group. This is <laughs> this is group five. Okay. Okay. Are you good? Good to go. Okay. Hi. We are Vivifix Manufacturing. Where we are uh, Kara, senior industrial engineer, experienced in manufacturing floors and supply chain logistics. Adam right here, senior mechanical engineer, knowledge in mechanical design and machine operations. Hudson is a robotics engineer. Business, he, he already owns a business making balls of a lathe and captain his first FGC team leading in the state championship. Noah, which is missing, uh, is an aerospace engineer and has deep knowledge of 3D printers and knows which parts need maintenance. Uh, I am Hudson Leos, a mechanical engineer, experience with the lab system and quality control in chem- a chemical plant and free military communications. So we will be producing previously plastic parts on mills to be made out of aluminum. These prints will be stronger, uh, more dimensionally accurate, and more rigid, and will be marketed towards consumer 3D printers. Okay, so what we're asking for cost is a total of about $500,000. I provided a rough breakdown there. Um, Our main costs are gonna be coming from land and taxes, which will be set up in Louisiana. Um, and we're also gonna, there's also gonna be heavy costs surrounding machinery, which is expected and normal. So future expansion and growth, um, as our company grows, we expand into more uh, 3D printer parts um, and machining them out of aluminum. And then for our further goals is to actually build an entire metal 3D printer that will be more accurate and less uh, require less maintenance. Outstanding, time for a couple of questions. Okay, um, group six. John, is it this one here? Is this the microphone? Wait a minute, where's our, where's our presentation? Is it this one? Where's our presentation? Um, what, here? And then where do I go? Uh, hit speed grader. What? It's hit the speed grader link. Oh, I see. Yep, there you go. And then select your group from the drop down. Drop down. 
right there. Yeah. Right where it says group one at the top. Just oh, find, your, find your group. And well, there's two submissions. Oh, Click on the other one. Yeah. There you go. All right. So um, is the microphone on? Yep. You're good. Okay. So we are uh, Fairhaven, actually. That's the name of our um, that's the name of our company. Um, so I am the engineer quality control. My name's Gabe, by the way. Um, yeah. And you're Nate. I'm Nate. I'm Jess. I'm Charlie. Um, so our facility is called Fairhaven Metalworking, and we're an aerospace uh, industry facility creating airplane seat frames. Um, we're registered in Massachusetts. As for startup costs, we're going to spend a majority of our uh, finances on milling and turning machines, as well as the installation of such things, which is going to total around one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. As for tooling, most of our machining is going to be done via milling. So we have mostly mill tools, but we also have some lathe tools just in case uh, for other tooling, such as hand tools and air compressors. That's going to come out to around 4000 for around uh, $6,000 worth of tooling. So for expenses, uh, the material cost is going to be about $70 of airplane, air, airplane grade aluminum per seat. Uh, we also have uh, water and electricity costs. CAM software is going to be about $2,000 for a down payment for lifetime use. Uh, so total annual costs are going to come out to around $200,000. And uh, we're looking to make about $550,000 per year. Uh, lastly, we wanted to talk a little bit about requirements and certifications. Um, the FAA requirements for airplane seats, uh, it outlines minimum supporting loads, but it does not outline minimum or maximum dimensions of airplane seats. This is largely left up to the manufacturer to decide what the you know, optimal dimensions would be for our seats. So we'll pick somewhere around a happy medium. And that is it. Outstanding. Time for one question. Currently, we're focusing only on airplane seats. Perfect. <clears throat> Group seven. He's finished right on time. All right, so we are JBass, and we're serving the locomotion industry. Um, we're kind of a job shop type shop. So essentially what we're doing is we're taking um, broken pieces of trains, and instead of buying a brand new cast iron piece for a train wheel, say, we'll fix your train wheel and send it back to you. Um, we just do the work, essentially. Oops, not that. Okay, so instead of wasting the damage our broken parts, we're going to be... So instead of making like wasting it, the customer is gonna um, come to us, and we're gonna fix the broken part, and so that limits waste, and we're gonna save the money for both us and the customer. All right. So as you see here, here's the manufacturing process. First, they ship us the broken piece. After that, we, yeah, kind of fracture it out and prep it for welding and then weld it together using whatever welding process we use. And then they we place in a lathe to kind of get all of that extra weld out. And then after, and then we make sure it's good to go. And this is just an example of one piece. It's not, we not our sole purpose. Yeah, so uh, we have a website that detail our entire process and it includes the cost and specs on what the money will go towards. <laughs> so this is our website. This is kind of just like it shows all of our costs to a pretty uh, good degree. For We have a one-year plan and a five-year plan. The five-year plan um, just includes five years worth of rent for our building. We're leasing as opposed to buying a building. 
Um, and yeah, we have a pretty expansive tooling, machining. We even include incidentals within our cost, which is something that um, I think a lot of groups may have forgotten to think about because um, things like electricity are expensive. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Oh, yeah. oh, also, we're asking for a $650,000 worth of 50% equity. That's our offer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our name, my name is Simeon. I'm a manager in sales marketing. This is Jonathan. I'm the engineering and I was standing. programmer. Uh, I'm Bryce. I honestly forgot my role. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Aiden. I'm in uh, finances and uh, c and engineering. And as you can see, we value by diversity. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> This is no time for questions. <laughs> Next group. Oh, no, three quick. Three quick. Yeah, three quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be at speed grader. And there's a Right where it says group seven there, just hit the drop down. Your bait. There you go. <laughs> Hello. We are Jacob Manufacturing. I'm Oliver. Uh, I'm Jaron. I'm Diana. I'm Arjun. I'm Clayton. All right. Arjun's going to take us away. All right. So the problem. There's a lot of injection molding companies in America, big and small, and they have a need for high quality injection molds. Outsourced parts from China and other overseas sellers have slow lead times and slow and costly shipping. It's hard to communicate with these companies due to language barriers and the distance and errors in parts can lead to extraordinarily long delays due to the aforementioned shipping and lead times. Our solution to this is small scale, short run manufacturing with an emphasis on vertically integrated systems. That means we're now quality control and shipping vertically integrated. Basically, our goal is to hand deliver every package that we machine. When we make your part, we will get it to you in a matter of hours instead of days or weeks. In order to do this, we have to be in a short range of our target consumers. Hence why we want to be located in California, since there are over 600 <coughs> injection molding facilities in California alone. On top of this, using our in-house quality control, we want to guarantee that every part is ISO 9000 compliant or better. So this brings us to what we actually need. So firstly, we want an investment of $425,000 so we can start and operate immediately and we can operate for th up to three years, if not more. This investment will allow us to purchase two mills, one lathe, a uh, corn measuring machine, and an air compressor. That way we have quality control. Um, it will allow us to rent a warehouse in Viewmont, California for three years. It'll let us furnish and prepare the machine shop and purchase a vehicle for deliveries. Thank you guys for listening and help us make the mold. <laughs> that was standing. Time for one question. Yeah, uh, are you focusing on a specific um, industry? Like, um, We're focusing on mold manufacturing. Specific, like I said earlier, in California, that is like the epicenter of uh, injection molding in America. Second to that, there's Michigan, and then I forget where else. But in the future, we were also looking into expanding. A lot of injection molding in Massachusetts. Uh, group nine, right? Okay, let's just split it I up. Like live in either place. I'll start off. Okay. Wait, is this the same template? Yeah, but we, we started with this though. <laughs> they had it after us. Okay, they copied us. All right. Just check in. All right, so this is by the Coast Medical and Co. Uh, it's the California what? template. Yeah, no, but we had this first. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go ahead. Okay, this is by the Co we're by the Coast Medical Co. I'm Peter. Andrew. I'm Daniel. I'm Corbin. I'm Nick. Um, we chose Maine as our location. We're um, building uh, ventilator parts, specifically fasteners within the ventilator for it to stick together because there's a lot of complicated parts. We chose Maine um, particularly because it's um, a good place for 
um, being close to Boston and Canada when it comes to um, shipping um, is also by the coast, our particular location. Um, and so there's a lot of good incentives for why you'd want to make a ventilator, including the fact that you get direct, direct federal subsidies um, for ventilators by bid um, if there's like a pandemic or something. Um, you want to go to the specifics? Yeah, so essentially we're just a job shop. So any companies will outsource their work to us. So basically what a job shop entails is we receive uh, extruded bar. Uh, we're going to be doing mostly turning like lathe operations. So we'll turn it down to the diameter, do whatever drilling. And then we also have a lathe, I mean a uh, CNC mill. So if there needs to be any secondary operations, we could uh, go with that. And then it'll go through quality control, cleaning, and then shipping. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. just say it. Are we going to do ventilators? Because that's very important, and we like to save lives. <laughs> um, additionally, uh, the market for ventilators has been growing, according to uh, emerging research. It's growing. It's going to become um, a $1.6 billion dollar U.S. dollar market, uh, as opposed to 907 million in tw in 2019. Uh, sorry, uh, 907 million in 2019, as opposed to tw in 2027, is going to be 1.6 billion dollars. Hopefully, that'll create an increased market for people to contract work out right. of us. And that's why we're we picked this as a good place for shipping and receiving because um, it's low cost um, uh, to produce and can be done on a massive scale. Okay, so for our total cost, we're going to be asking for around $414,000. Obviously, you can see we need lathes, mills, air compressor, inspection equipment, and such forth. I'll use a simple uh, business to business marketing strategy, and we're going to uh, focus mainly on having a good functional website and then rely on uh, word of mouth marketing, intensive trade shows, and other public uh, functions to get our name to the industry. Uh, and then there's uh, finally FDA compliance. So we obviously have to um, apply by FDA compliance as well as some federal based certifications for manufacturing a medical device, um, which has been gone over by other groups. Um, but we can, we'll, we'll be more extensive in that. And there's a lot of different uh, certifications for specific parts, but um, it's a very profitable business. So I think it's a good choice to invest in. All right, no time for questions. Group 10. Uh, we are MedMech Manufacturing, and we do medical manufacturing, specifically um, small parts and prototyping. My name is Blaze. I'm Emma. I'm Eric. I'm Jackie. I'm Alex. I'm Sanchi. All right. That was not what I wanted to do. All right. So our company, like I just said, serving the medical industry, and we'll talk a little bit more about specific parts as we go through. Uh, we chose to be housed in New Hampshire. Uh, we found a space for 4700 a month. Um, New Hampshire has no sales tax. We're hoping that might help with sales. And then has a corporate tax of 7.5%, which is middle ground, a little less than Massachusetts. Yep. Um, as you know, we all have jobs. We don't really need to get specific with it. Um, licensing, there's going to be a whole lot of licensing required, which makes sense um, in the medical industry for safety and those kinds of things. So these are some of the licensing things. Um, there's also a bunch of ISO standards to adhere to. Um, for medical manufacturing and with all of these different standards and licensing and stuff, our plan and certifications is to just hire someone to help us do all this um, because that will save time and energy um, and help us get started up quicker. Anyone want to talk about the companies? Um, also, we were thinking like we can join um, like nonprofit organizations or reach out to like neighborhood or like community departments, uh, like for the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services, they probably have resources for us to require licenses. And we can also join the New Hampshire Business and Industry Association since um, they probably have other companies in the medical manufacturing industry that could provide assistance or guidance on licensing. 
So this, this is the uh, some of the equipment that we were looking to purchase. Uh, these are the machine tools, mills, uh, 3D printer, and some equipment and materials for that, as well as in the next slide, um, there's just basic office supplies and other things that we need to run our business. And then, uh, so in total, that would bring us to $832,080 is what we're looking for. <coughs> Okay, no time for uh, for questions. Group 11. All right. We're Group 11. Um, we specialize in high-quality performance parts for cars. A couple of our other group members are currently snowed in, but uh, we also do for today. Yeah, we're here. So for starters, we're going to be located in Southern California, uh, Long Beach to be, uh, to be specific. Uh, this is the best serve the high performance car industry. Uh, there's a... Uh, permits and license and materials, we estimate the cost to be about one, a little over one and a quarter million to start with. Uh, the parts we're going to be making are um, camshafts, crankshafts, valves, and turbochargers, um, as these are some of the most important parts for high performance cars. And um, these are some of the things you're going to want to modify if you want to increase your high, increase your horsepower output as much as possible quickly. Um, the, hold on. The tools that those are going to be. The tools that are going to be needed to manufacture those parts are mills and lathes, um, which we, as we just showed, we budgeted for two of. Um, so these have a little bit of varying complexity to build. I won't get too far into this because we don't have too much time. But um, overall, we feel we'll be very successful because we're going to produce high quality parts, um, selling them at higher prices than our competitors. But people will come to us because of our extreme standard of quality. Um, we're going to take, it's going to take time for us to break even, but, um, it's going to allow us for investments in more machines and, uh, to do more research and development and figuring out which parts are going to work better. And, um, we have a lot of strong experience in, uh, cam software and CNC milling from our experience at WPI. So we feel that we'll be a okay to design this stuff. Perfect time for one question. I don't want to tap you. Go up to the very first slide. I really like the logo. Yeah, the yeah, 11. Yeah, right next to the. Yeah. That was all Michael. Yeah. Design. Thanks. Thank you. All right. All right. And group 12. We are Group 12. Our company is called Inatech. I'm Eleanor Ross. I'm Thomas. I'm Molly. I'm Maria. Um, so our company is going to be manufacturing automotive parts, specifically steering wheels and door handles. And we believe that we're going to be a good company because we have a lot of experience from ME1800. So why California? First of all, there's 52 motor vehicle companies located in California. So it really is a good market to tap into. So we can supply parts and, and there's definitely a lot of consumers. California is a state with most, like the most registered vehicles with 14 million cars. And then um, California also um, incentivizes businesses to settle themselves there by um, having tax incentives and simplifying the, the process of starting a business there. This is just a rundown of the manufacturing process. Um, it goes through a series of milling, quality assessments, uh, lathes, bending.
This is due to our purchases, which include our mill, lathe, the transportation of those machines, our facility, our materials, our licensing, and the other specifics we have listed here that ensure that we will successfully produce our product. That's it. Any questions? Hey, that worked. We finished on time. You guys know we actually had three minutes per group, right? That's why I let some of y'all go over your time. But which, um, all right, from the audience, I have, I have my pick. When I was making notes, I put asterisks all around the group name. So which group did the best presentation? Who thinks it was group 11? What was the, uh, all right, so what were the, uh, what were the groups, right? Yeah, to, uh, yeah, so group, group 13, yeah, yeah, so, so group 13, what did you do? What, what, windshield wipers, group 13. Group, group one, what did you do? Door, door openers. Uh, group two, door, door things, everything but the door. Group two, what'd you do? Cam shafts. Group three, what'd you do? Chop shop. Group four. Firearms. Firearms. Group five. <laughs> Three printed parts. Group six. Airplane seeds. Group seven. Say again. Chop shop. Group eight. Injection molding. Group nine. Ventilator parts. Group 10. Medical parts prototyping. Group 11. Car parts. Group 12. Car, other car parts. All right. So now you've heard each group. Which which one had the best presentation? I got one vote for firearms. Well, you can't vote for your own group. Okay. All right. The one that stood out to me. And so I'm, I'm not going to grade you guys based on your presentation. This is not a presentation class. I want everybody to have the experience of doing the presentation. Right. I'll grade you based on the paper you hand in. But the, the presentation, what I want to do is give you guys some feedback on presentations in general. So everybody knew that today was presentations, right? Which groups practiced? Couple, couple groups. Which groups had energy when they came up to present? Oh, I, I, I made a note about your group not having energy. <laughs> the, the group that stood out to me was group eight. Group eight, stand up, take a bow. Group, group eight, stand up, take a bow. You guys stood out to me because you started with the problem statement. Your first slide said the problem is, and this is the solution we have for the problem, and this is how much it's going to cost, and you ended on time. So most of the groups went over on time. A few groups were under. Um, but anyway, group eight stood out to me. So when you go back and watch the video, pay attention to, pay attention to group eight. Yes. Group eight, what did you guys do? Injection molding. They were the ones that were making molds for injection molding shops. Um, anyway, so I, I think this was great. I hope that everybody got something out of this. Um, I did change the syllabus for the last two days of the class. Originally, I had said we're not going to do Wednesday this week. And that I was going to do a lecture on Thursday. I could still do that. But I changed the syllabus. I changed the syllabus to say that the lecture we were going to do on Thursday, we're going to do it on Wednesday. And then I was going to do something else on Thursday. Um, the thing that I had scheduled for Thursday and I moved to Wednesday, there's a pretty good video of me doing that lecture in the past. Would you guys rather if you just watched that video? when you felt like, and we still didn't have class tomorrow because the AV equipment still is not going to work in that room tomorrow. 
And last week when I left that room, I did announce to the world that I was never again going to step foot in that room again. Um, so I w- I'll just put up the video, watch the video. The, the lecture topic is design of safety systems. And it is important for you guys to be familiar with that. The, the reason is, and the reason I do that lecture at the end of the class instead of the beginning of the class is because at the beginning of the class, I could teach you about safety rules. At the end of the class, you could develop the safety rules yourself because you've got, now got experience. And that's why I do that lecture at the end of the class. But on Thursday, and um, I suppose it won't be part of the final exam unless you make it part of the final exam. Um, on Thursday, I want to talk about my vision for the future of manufacturing and what manufacturing businesses need from you to make it happen. Yep. What's that? When is the final exam? On Thursday, hand in three, I have a problem with that finger, three questions that should be on a final exam for this class with the answers. And I'll, I'll, I'll post it as soon as I get back to my office, the place for you to hand that in and a place for you to hand in your um, paper. And if you've already handed in your paper in this thing, hand it in again in the new thing so that they're all together. Yeah. So is that due Thursday at the start of class? End of day. End of day. Or whatever, no, well, Friday's the last day of the term, right? Yeah. Friday. Friday then. Do Friday. Friday do, Friday. do the last day of the term. Okay. Midnight. Is there any, like, uh, a question that you think should be on a final exam for this class and the answer. Right. You could, you could, you could create a really good multiple choice question with good possible answers and then note which one is the correct one. Or the easiest kind of question to create is like an essay style question. It's the hardest kind of question to grade because you have to read all of them and then decide if they understood that. So you could you could come up with, um, I don't know, what's a, what's a question that could be on the final exam for this class? Why is lean manufacturing important for the future of manufacturing? That could be a question for this. It's, um, it's open-ended. It's based on your opinion, but in expressing your opinion, you might have to demonstrate that you know something about lean manufacturing, right? So that could be a question, yeah. So those, que- those kind of questions are easy to create, hard to answer, right? Are we going to be graded on our answer or our questions are both? Yes. <laughs> no. Questions that should be on the final exam for this class. For example, you could ask a question that's on a topic that we didn't talk about in this class but you think we should have talked about it in this class. Yeah. Each person, three questions. Right? Each person, three questions. Okay, could be like two multiple choice and one answer question. Could be three false, yeah, true false questions. But they better be good true false questions. <laughs> yeah, it's already posted. <laughs> If if you really think that should have been part of this class, okay. 